What's up guys? Today I want to talk about baseball bats, softball bats, all kinds of bats, and how I've made thousands over years selling them on eBay and different sporting goods stores and how you can start buying baseball bats and making money too. So before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience with baseball bats. I worked for a sporting goods store for 10 years. I learned a lot about baseball bats, learned how to find dents and cracks easily, uh, learned the differences between them, learned which ones were really hot, uh, which ones you know had a lot, really high demand. And over time, I've been selling more and more of them on eBay and finding a lot of them out in the wild at thrift stores, garage sales, just like pretty much everywhere. <clears throat> so we'll get right into it. Um, basically, when you're looking for bats, the ones that really bring pretty good money are the aluminum and the composite bats. Uh, some wood bats can bring good money, but it's it's pretty rare. Uh, as far as you know, wood bats that people are actually playing with, you know, they usually get cracked and they just don't have a long shelf life. Um, but the collectible, some collectible wood bats are worth really big money. We just aren't going to get into that today. But we're, today we're going to deal with the aluminum and the composite bat. Um, when you're out there looking for bats, different the way you tell the difference between aluminum and composite, an aluminum bat will typically be all one piece like this. And when you hit it against the ground, it's going to make that big ping noise. Because uh, it's, it's all one solid piece. I'm sure everybody remembers to be playing Little League and, you know, taking a swing and your hand just, you know, stinging from that metal. Uh, so that's an aluminum bat. And the composite bat, a little bit different. Uh, they came out with these maybe 8 to 10 years ago, I want to say. Um, the composite bats, when you hit them against the ground, it's almost like a knock at the door. It sounds like a knock at the door, basically. Uh, but these have thinner walls, so when the ball hits it, it actually like shoots off of the bat. It actually retracts a little bit and then hits it out, and these things have a lot of pop to them. That's why they're so popular. Uh, composite bats will always have a cap at the end. There are some aluminum bats that have this cap too, but this is always a dead giveaway and the dead giveaway for composite. Tap it against the ground and you're going to hear a knock type noise. All right, so those are the two types of bats. Now we're going to get into uh, length and weight. So if you ever need to quickly figure out how long a bat is, it's usually on the barrel. They'll usually say somewhere on there, you know, length 33 in inches weight 30 ounces okay and then a lot of times too you will find it on the end of the bat 33 inches sometimes they'll put the weight here too another thing you'll see a lot of times on bats is a number for example this says minus three what that tells you is that's the difference between the length and the weight so this one is 33 inches 30 ounces Hence the minus three. If it was 33 inches and 23 ounces, it would be minus 10. Uh, basically, there's different rules for if you're playing in different levels. So all high schoolers have to have a minus three. Uh, you know, like little leaguers can have a minus 10 or minus 12. It's kind of all over the place. Um, as far as types of bats, Usually, like T-ball and Little League, just don't waste your time with. The way you can typically tell is all those are around like 29 inches or shorter. Uh, for the most part, they just don't sell for a whole lot of money. It just kind of depends, obviously. But T-ball, definitely don't waste your time with. There's very few Little Leagues that, that you'll make money on. Uh, what you want to focus on are softball bats, like high school bats. Uh, and when I say softball, like fast pitch and slow pitch, it really just kind of depends on on which ones they are. <clears throat> um, you're going to see stamps on bats. For example, this one is ASA Certified 2004. This isn't always something you have to worry about if a bat is selling on eBay pretty well. Recently, you're looking at recent uh, postings and it's selling well. Don't really worry about the stamp. But if you're wanting to sell locally to a sporting goods store, just talk to them and say, hey, if I'm buying bats and bringing them into you, you know, what stamps do I need to have? These stamps are always changing. Uh, about every four or five years, 
they put out a new stamp and then they put all these new bats and then that makes a lot of the old bats illegal to use in games. Um, sometimes, you know, umpires and coaches don't really care, but sometimes it gets enforced and that's why these sporting goods stores have to be careful of what they buy. So just talk to your local sporting goods store before you're buying bats to sell to them with what stamp um, they they look for. There's one right now, but it's getting ready to, this is going to be the last year of it, then there's going to be a whole new stamp next year. So they're kind of in a transition as far as the stamps go. We'll talk about grips for a minute. Um, this grip right here, as you can see, is pretty worn. It looks like they just took it off entirely and put some tape on it. Grips are not going to be a deal breaker for you. Uh, if, you're fine, if you see a bat and the grip is just totally worn down and is in bad shape, it's, it's not a big deal at all. You can take those off easily, replace them with a new one, or just sell it as is and let the person put what grip they want to put on it. That's usually what I do. People are pretty picky with their grips, especially uh, softball players. You know, some guys just like a little tape. Some guys like a lot of tape down here, and then he, they let it get uh, thinner as it goes. So do not let the grip be a deal breaker. Uh, we'll talk about brands really quick. So the best brand for reselling bats is Easton. I've got three different Easton bats here, and sometimes even a really old bat can bring some decent money. Uh, there's some bats that you look at them and you're like, that just looks like a piece of junk, and then you look it up and it's selling for really good money. It just all depends on what it is. Um, D. Marini is another pretty good brand. Louisville Slugger TPS, especially in the older slow pitch bats, are pretty good. Combat is another good brand. Uh, there's a lot of good brands to look for. I'd say the brands to probably stay away from, like Rawlings makes, they make gloves, but they make bats too, and their bats just aren't very good. Um, model numbers are going to be the most important piece of this puzzle. So when you are looking at a bat, first thing you need to do is find the model number. Model number a lot of times is going to be on the barrel. Sometimes it will even say model and then it will give you what it is. So this one is BSS2. Um, other times it's a little bit harder. So for example, this is an Easton. That's Easton logo. Model number is BSS2. So you would just search Easton BSS2. Look at the completeds and the solds. That will give you a pretty good idea. Other times it's a little bit harder to find the model number. You know, I might just say like MDL and then the model number. Sometimes it doesn't say model at all. It'll just have a couple little letters and numbers. It's up to you to figure out that that's the model number. But that's always the best way. You don't really want to search by the name of it. So like this is a stealth speed because there's tons of different stealth speeds. So you really don't want to look at that. Uh, but when you do look up that model number, just make sure you're looking at the same size and type of bat. Sometimes, you know, like a Little League could pop up, like a shorter bat. So when you see those sold listings, make sure you're, you're comparing apples to apples with those bats. All right, I'm going to show you guys a few more things. We're going to do a little screen share here and uh, jump into some sold bats. All right, before we get into the solds, I want to show you guys... Um, you really want to look for dents and cracks. So you found a bat, you've looked up the model number, it's selling for pretty good money. Next thing you have to do is check it for dents and cracks. Uh, dents, what you're going to want to do is just kind of rub your hand along the bat, pretty much just in this barrel spot because that's you know where the ball is being hit. And you can usually tell if there's a dent you know it's not going to be smooth, it's going to be a big bump. Um, and, you know, that's usually a deal breaker. Uh, not as much as a crack, but if there's a dent in there, it's going to make it a lot harder for you to sell. As far as cracks go, I've got a picture pulled up. Cracks are very, very small. Um, sometimes they're, they're really hard to see, and it's going to be hard to show you on the camera. i got a picture of one right here. It's kind of cracked along along the line they will typically be horizontal so they were they will go with 
the direction of the bat. You'll almost never see a crack like this. Um, bats can have a lot of scratches. They won't, they won't hurt it, but a crack will completely kill the integrity of a bat. You know, it's, it's not going to have any kind of power at all once that cracks in there. The way you tell the difference between a crack and a scratch is when you run your fingernail across a crack, it's going to kind of catch it a little bit. It's going to catch your fingernail. And it's one of those things, the more cracks you see in bats, the easier you'll be able to tell them. Uh, but yeah, cracks are one thing. You just have to look over very, very carefully. You know, spend, spend a minute, just a minute or two, looking over, kind of checking it for cracks. Because if it does have a crack in it, it'll be almost impossible to sell. All right, let's look at some soles. I'm going to show you guys a few bolos on bats. <clears throat> a couple of the most expensive, hottest used bats out there are the Easton Z2K. This one here sold for $1,500. I think that's probably more on the high end. Uh, I think I did, you know, highest first on my little sort here. Uh, but yeah, the Easton Z2K is awesome. These are minus fives. Obviously very tough to find, but if you find one, I mean, <laughs> you've hit the jackpot. These things are great. I've never personally found a Z2K out, you know, in the wild. Found a lot of other bats, but not a Z2K. It's kind of like the holy grail of bats. But yeah, I mean, 600 to 700 of these bats are selling for a ton of money. And, you know, if you look at it, it just doesn't look like anything really special, but that is a great bat. Another one is an Easton Redline. Again, these are drop five. A lot of minus five bats are pretty popular because I'm, I don't think they make minus fives anymore. I think it's pretty much minus threes and minus eights. And a lot of guys like these minus five bats. And, you know, these are going to be for, like, either, like, High, like younger high schoolers or older middle schoolers, kind of in that transition phase, or guys that just want a little bit more bat speed. So, you know, if they're traveling around and maybe the leagues aren't enforcing all of the stamps, they can use these older bats. So, yeah, this, this old Easton red line is definitely a good one to look for. And there are tons of other bats that sell, you know, $50 to $100 all day long. So, really, just look up the model number. Check for dents and cracks. And that's pretty much it, guys. Go out and buy some bats and make some money. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.